Hey, what's up, NY Talker? So I wanted to share something with you is that once you let go of the need to have one take footage, everything perfect that first time, it opens up a lot of opportunities for you. So I'm gonna show you that this video is an example of that. So because we've gotten rid of the need to film everything in one take and the need to have the video be one piece of footage, we're able to be much more dynamic with it and choose where we wanna film, when we can film, and this is taking what we call the documenting approach. Uh, the only real barrier you have to get over for this is the confidence to take action on it, given that you'll be documenting throughout the day or throughout the week or what have you based on your video cadence. But I'm actually gonna show you, I'm just in selfie mode right now, but it is really helpful to get a tripod and, and set that up and then be able to deliver your content that way. So I'll actually wrap up this video with that. All right, so now we have our camera on the tripod. And what I wanna talk about for the remainder of this video is, do you have to be a social media person to do video? I have been asked before is that, uh, Randy, but you just seem so natural on camera. You seem like a social media person. At my core, I'm actually not a huge social media person. But what I've built my business around is the idea that moving towards the future is that video and media is not going away on social media. It is one of the most powerful ways to communicate your message and also to build authority around your industry in your niche. So for me, I'm actually not a huge social media person. You can ask friends and family when I was younger. I was actually pretty late to getting even a Facebook early on. And Facebook had been around for a few years and I got it pretty late. And that's the big example. But I want you to have the assurance that you don't have to be a huge social media person to use video. Because at the end of the day, the, the video is you delivering a message. It doesn't have it doesn't have to be you using social media all day, every day. What you're doing is you're creating video and media assets so that you can teach your ideal client, your ideal customer. And then you can always repurpose those assets once you start using other platforms. But having a base that you can go back to and having the confidence to take action on these things, that's why in this video, you saw me uh, walking outside and then getting into the space here and now I'm sitting here is these three bits of footage allows me to be more of a dynamic speak in a way that's natural to me and I'm not beholden by having to deliver <laughs> we, we, we mentioned this before I probably will do a video on this but you don't have to deliver a state of the union every single time you get on camera where you set up a camera or you're maybe you're looking at your webcam and, and then you look right into the camera lens and deliver some serious message every single time. That doesn't have to be the case. It would actually, it's actually gonna exhaust you. Have, imagine having to deliver a state of union every single day, or even a once a week when you're doing a video. It's almost like by making things so dramatic every single time, you're going to lose your excitement around it because if you're making it dramatic every single time, it's then it's probably not dramatic. So don't be afraid to really lean in to allowing an editor, allowing an assistant to take your footage and package it in a way that's useful for your audience because you don't have to do everything on your own. You don't have to be the best public speaker in the world to succeed with video. I've actually done a video on this before. Um, let me know if you'd like me to do a revised version on it, but you don't have to be the best public speaker around to do video for social media. The funny truth is that those who identify as a public speaker, unless we're talking about a big influencer who does keynotes and there's someone filming the keynote, if you are someone who identifies as a public speaker and you're trying to do video, you actually fall into this category of perfectionism that a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs don't fall into because business owners and entrepreneurs understand that doesn't have to be perfect to ship. But if you identify as a public speaker, you want everything to be perfect, and you're thinking that going to speak on camera is the same exact thing as delivering a speech in front of an audience. It's, it's actually very different because delivering in front of an audience, the expectation of the audience is different. They've either driven to come see you speak or they've, they've signed up for a webinar for 30 minutes or an hour. They know that they're gonna be there for an extended amount of time. <laughs> Social media videos, on the other hand, 
There's a slight exception with this with YouTube. If someone has searched you on YouTube to watch through your playlist and through your library, but think about a standard news feed on social media is they're not logging on to see you. They're logging on to see things. So they're not expecting to sit with you for the 30 minutes or to an hour the way a live speech works. They're just looking for something quick, short, learn something new. So I've alluded to this, but trying to do everything in one take all the time on your own doesn't account for the, the expectation that your viewers are having where even small, what you think are small pauses between what you're saying, that's a moment to lose someone. Because, oh, I'll just go to the next one. Well, I'll just go to the next one. Oh, I'll just go to the next one. This is loosely based off, uh, I, I usually get this comment about once every few weeks about if you do a lot of cuts in a video, to keep it simple, just call them jump cuts. There's a variety of cuts you can do or have your editor do. But if you do a lot of jump cuts, then it becomes like, oh, well, Randy, was in a really jumpy video? That's not helpful. But guess what? Your audience on social media wants to see your video as quickly as possible. And those cuts are actually pattern interrupts where if you think of someone watching, someone scrolling on social media and then they stop to watch a video, imagine that they're kind of do dozing off or losing attention, and then the cut brings them back. Kind of all losing attention, the cut brings them back. So it's not only gonna build your confidence and have you be more empowered on camera, knowing that you have an editor, you have an assistant that has your back to portray you in the best light possible. It's also gonna make you get way more consistent. You can create video and, and, and embrace that documenting approach where you're able to film as you go, as you are teaching. It doesn't always have to be a formal podcast or a formal live stream. This is a great way to build accountability set so that you show up. But I would argue, entrepreneur who has not delved into the fray of video content, to have one more thing you have to do that's a big deal, you're not ready for that yet. It's about building a practice that you can get consistent with and basically proving to yourself that you're ready to go to the next step. And these are some processes and tips that you can use for that. And listen, I'll see you in the next video. Um, for now, uh, leave a comment with your perspective on this or, or which part was helpful for you. And I will talk to you soon. Randy here, Now you're talking.